In 2020, I made a desk tour setup video where I was in a different part of the house. I was working from home remotely full time. Two years later, I'm in a different room in the house now. I'm going into the office a few days a week. I have a lot of the same equipment, but I've done a few upgrades along the way. This is my 2022 desk tour setup. Let's get into it. My name is Patrick and this is Everyday Tech, everyday tech for everyday people. My full-time job is as a web developer, so I want a desk setup that allows me to be as productive as possible as a full-time web developer, but I also want a setup that allows me to be productive as a content creator, both in filming and in editing these types of videos. I'm also still in a lot of Zoom meetings, both professionally and personally, so I, wanted a, I want a setup that allows me to get the best quality for my Zoom meetings. In this video, I'm not gonna only go over the components I have in my setup here, but also tell you what I would change and how I would improve some of these things. Hopefully this will spark some ideas in your own setup as well. Let's talk about the desk itself. This is the Langston desk from All Modern. All Modern is a Wayfair company. Unfortunately, they don't sell this anymore, but one of the things I love about this desk here is the desktop area here, the size of it. And I like to keep my desk pretty uncluttered and have this kind of openness feeling. Having this desk allows me to do some demos if I need to move the keyboard and mouse out of the way. I oftentimes have multiple devices on my desk so I can have my laptop or my iPad to work with while I'm using the main computer as well. It's made out of solid wood and that allows me to clamp a number of things onto the desk and as we'll see later on in this video, I have a lot of things clamped onto this desk. So the main thing I don't like about this desk is the stand or the frame itself. It is a little bit wobbly and it has to do with the way it's constructed. So one of the ways I'm considering upgrading this desk is to keep the desktop but change the frame or the legs itself. I'm either going to get a sit stand frame or do the IKEA hack that a lot of YouTubers use. It's getting two Alex drawers and putting the desktop on. That way I get extra drawer space and I have a solid desk as well. So let's talk about the things that are not on the desktop and kind of hidden from view. Let's first talk about the thing that's powering my setup here, the computer itself. This is the M1 Mac mini. This version has 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. I still say that this is one of if not the best valued computer that you can get. I have it mounted on this mount here that's attached to my desk. You can attach it to the desk like I have it here, or you can attach it to a monitor that has a VESA mount as well. It does keep things less cluttered here as it doesn't take any space on my desktop or on the shelves here. Moving on to the dock, this is the CalDigit TS3 Plus Thunderbolt 3 dock. It has five USB-A ports, two regular USB-C ports, two Thunderbolt 3 ports, Ethernet jack, digital audio out, a display port, and an SD card reader. It also has some audio jacks in the front where I hook up my headphones to. As far as external storage is concerned, I have a USB hard drive dock here. I have a three terabyte hard drive attached to it. Then I have the Samsung T7 Touch SSD drive that I use mainly for editing these videos. This is the 500 gigabyte version, and I'm really happy with the speeds I'm getting with this drive. Behind is the Clark Technic CM2 mic booster. This is a two input and output mic booster with dynamic microphones, which I'm using, often needs a signal boost to get a cleaner sound, depending on the audio interface that you're using. Moving on to the bottom shelf, you have a bunch of random gadgets here. I have a bunch of travel routers, Raspberry Pis and some power banks, but behind there is one of my main power strips. This is a power strip by APC. So one of the things I may do is get a power strip box, which kind of hides all the wire clutter. The other power strip is attached to the bottom of my desk. I do have a lot of these clips to attach the loose wires to the top of the desk here. I have my laser printer here. I have some plastic shelving. Behind the plastic shelving there is my Epson ES200 scanner. I did a review on that, so check that out in the description below. Then behind the printer, I actually have a Chromecast, which feeds into my video switcher, which I'll get into in a moment. Then in front of the printer, I have a USB dock that I have a lot of different small gadgets attached to as well. So let's talk about what's on top. The biggest thing that stands out, of course, is this huge ultra wide monitor. This is the Monoprice 35 inch 0G 
curved gaming monitor. I wanted an ultra wide monitor for mainly for productivity. Now, if you've never had an ultra wide monitor, once you go ultra wide, it's hard to go back. This is like having two 24 inch monitors together. Now this is a curved monitor. One of the things I wish this monitor was, was more curved. So this is rated at 1800 R, which is 1800 millimeter radius. So the lower the number you go, the more curved it is. So I would go down to a 1500 or 1200. And if you go to a thousand R, you're looking into about a 49 inch ultra wide monitor. Next to the ultra wide is the U-Perfect 13.3 portable USB-C monitor in a vertical orientation. And I really love this monitor. I mainly use it for Slack and a second monitor for Zoom. Or if I need to do compare things side by side, I need extra real estate. It has a vase amount for a monitor arm. And so this is attached to a monitor arm. Actually, both these monitors are attached to a monitor arm. And using a monitor arm is such a game changer. It really takes away the clutter. You start to realize how much room and how much space a monitor stand takes up. Now, the main thing I would upgrade other than the curvature of the ultra wide is this 13.3 inch monitor here. I would actually go to a 15.6 portable monitor. I do have a 15.6 portable monitor already, but the only reason I don't use it is because it doesn't have the vase amount in the back. Now it's really important to have that vase amount so I can utilize the monitor arms. And actually both of these monitors are on separate Vivo monitor mounts. One is a single arm mount and one is a dual monitor mount. When I first started, I only had the single monitor mount, then I got another monitor, then I got the dual monitor mount. Then I got my ultra wide and so I decided to do this setup. Now this ultra wide is on the single monitor arm mount and then the 13.3 portable monitor is on the dual monitor mount. Now, of course, one of the arms is holding up the portable monitor, but the other one is used to mount up my camera. So attached to the monitor arm, I'm using one of these clamps by Small Rig. Attached to the clamp itself is a tripod ball head, and that's attached to the camera. So I'm really a big fan of these Small Rig clamps. I do have a number of them. I use them for attaching different cameras and lights to different places where you normally can attach things to. The camera itself is the Sony a6500 with the Sigma 16 millimeter f1.4 attached to it. It has a dummy battery attached to it so I don't have to worry about power. It has this little mirror box on top. It's the UU rig mirror box so I can see the LCD screen in the back because the LCD screen doesn't flip all the way up. I do have the newer Sony a6400, but I use that for everything else. I have my a6500 permanently in this position, so I don't have to move it when I do my Zoom meetings or do any recording for YouTube as well. But the other cable coming out of the a6500 is the HDMI cable, the micro HDMI cable, and that's attached to what's on my desk here. This is the a Mini Pro. Now, if you don't know, the a Mini Pro by Blackmagic Design is a four input video switcher. You can use them for live or recorded productions, both for online meetings and online presentations. Your computer just sees it as a webcam. I used to have the A10 Mini non-pro version, but the pro version brings in a few features such as multi-view, uh, being able to stream to YouTube and other platforms, directly from the A10 Mini Pro itself. And it also allows me to record video directly to an SSD drive. And what you attach to the A10 Mini Pro doesn't have to be a camera. Of course, I could attach four different cameras if I wanted to, but I also can attach a video input from my iPad, for example, or from my laptop if I wanna share my screen. So it's a very versatile tool. If I start to do more online productions on a regular basis, then I probably would consider upgrading to the A10 Mini Pro Extreme. Attached to the A10 Mini Pro is this tiny monitor, the seven inch monitor by a company called SunFounder. Now I wouldn't recommend this monitor. It does a little bit of overscanning, so I think it really cuts off the picture a little bit. The picture quality is not that great. I, the reason why I got it was, was because it was really cheap on eBay at the time. If I were to upgrade this in the future, I'd get them something more expensive like a Fuel World T7 on-camera field monitor. That's also seven inches, but it has really good quality and it's very versatile. I can use it for a lot of different applications. Let me finish up the video portion by talking about lighting. Before, when I was in the basement of my house, I had more room. I used to use this dedicated video light with this big softbox. 
I still have that set up, but I use it for other recorded video. But my, for my everyday use, I needed something more compact. So I decided to go with the Elgato Key Light. There are other cheaper and really good alternatives out there, but I like the Elgato Key Light here for its versatility, uh, software control, both on the desktop and my phone. I'm able to adjust the color temperature and the brightness very easily from both my phone and the desktop. I don't directly shine it on me, although it is a pretty good light to do so. I bounce it directly off my white wall in front of me here, and that acts like a big source of light. So it works really well that way. It's yet another thing that's clamped onto my desk, so it takes away the clutter off the ground as well. The mic that I use most of the time and what you're hearing me on right now with this voiceover is the Rode Pod Mic. Now there are a lot of mics out there, and I'll be honest with you, the main reason why I got this mic was it looked really good on camera as well. But after a while, I thought it was becoming a little distracting, especially on normal Zoom calls. But I wanted the same audio quality, but at the same time, not show my mic. So I got the Elgato Wave Mic Arm Low Profile, and this is an awesome arm. So now when I'm using the microphone, it's just out of frame here, but I'm only about six inches away from the microphone. When I'm not using it, I'm able to swing it away and it just goes right under my ultra wide monitor. Oftentimes you need to attach a dynamic microphone to a mic booster, which is attached to the Clark Technic CM2, which I mentioned before. And then it's attached to my audio interface. My audio interface is the Audience Evo 4 audio interface, which is a two input audio interface. An audio interface allows you to connect more professional microphones to your computer. Now you don't need an audio interface. There are a lot of high quality and pretty inexpensive USB microphones out there. As far as consuming audio is concerned, the speakers I have on this desk are the Amazon Basics Bookshelf 80 watt speakers. Now these are huge speakers. The only reason I got them was because they were on sale, an insane deal for about $50. Now you can only get them for about $350. These are really high quality sounding, very loud speakers, but they take so much room. So if I were to change it up or change the speakers out later on, of course I'd get pretty high quality speakers, but a lot smaller. At least they do match nicely with my desk. Other than my AirPods, I have my Wise headphones here. These are both Bluetooth and wired headphones. They're noise canceling if I need to. So they're very versatile. I have them hooked up to my CalDigit dock so I can easily switch between my speakers and my headphones very easily. And then the headphones are attached to a holder that's clipped onto the side of my desk to reduce clutter. So let's talk about some of the input accessories I have on my desk here. First, let's talk about the Stream Deck Mini here. Now the Stream Deck is a hardware device with buttons on there that allows you to customize actions based on the button press. I often use it for Zoom to unmute and mute myself, turn off my video, toggle different things. Here I have the Stream Deck Mini, which is a six button uh, hardware device. Now the obvious upgrade for me is to get a bigger Stream Deck, but I would argue that most people only need a Stream Deck Mini. Then we come to my keyboard and mouse. This is the Keychron K7 low profile mechanical keyboard. I have the one with the brown switches here. I'm able to change out the keycaps and the key switches to my personal liking. Mouse here is the Logitech M720. It's also known as a pro mouse. It's a very versatile mouse. Now, one of the things I don't like about this mouse is the loud clicking noise. So I may upgrade to the newly released MX Master 3S, which does have quiet keys. I did try a vertical mouse that Logitech has, and it does have quiet keys on there, but I didn't like the feel of the vertical mouse there. And then to finish up my keyboard and mouse setup here, they're on this extended gaming mouse pad. It's a very generic brand one. And then I have these wrist rests for both my keyboard and mouse. They're both generic brands as well. And as for the rest of the accessories on my desk that I didn't mention, First, I have my monitor light bar here. This is an LED lamp that attaches to your monitor. There's a lot of listings on Amazon. They're all pretty good. No need to spend more money on the BenQ light, monitor light bar that a lot of people have. And then I have a wireless charger on my desk here. This is also a generic brand, but it matches very well with my desk setup here. And then lastly, I have my Amazon Echo Show 5-inch version here. 
Let me know what you think I should improve in my own setup here. Hope this inspired something in your own setup as well. Now this setup started as working with what I have and just kind of slowly improving piece by piece. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and consider subscribing. Until the next one, see ya.